so Brian, you have uh, uh, with your full time job, you have a lot of office time. So maybe if you can uh, share with us this this beginning of the year uh, spring time, uh, what's your favorite type of uh, workouts? Uh, uh, you know, kind of middle middle of the spring, we might have snow, we might have sun. So share with us uh, what are your thoughts for the next uh, four weeks? Again, uh, how you do things, how you manage your time and uh, your favorite workouts. Yeah, so for me, springtime is a great time to do a lot of running. Uh, I really enjoy running and it's, it's a workout that works in any type of condition. So, you know, if you've got an inch of fresh snow on the ground, that's not so great for roller skiing or biking. So running in the spring is probably my favorite thing to do. The challenge is, is, you know, not getting injured by ramping up running too quickly. So one, in general, I try to run pretty regularly throughout the winter. And that's always a good option in case you don't have the opportunity to warm up on snow for your race. Sometimes maybe at the Berkey, I'll just go for a light jog ahead of time. Make sure that you have relatively new shoes. I like to cycle between two different sets of shoes. Now, let's be honest, I have like six pairs of shoes. I've got mud shoes, trail shoes, road shoes, and then probably two pairs of each of those, Gore-Tex shoes. Uh, can never have too many shoes, right? And so a lot of running. And then the other thing is adding in a fair amount of strength. So without a focus race, really, um, in general, I, I usually am focusing on the ski races. I'll hop in a few running races, but I, I don't really prepare for those. It's just a race on the calendar. So I like to add a little bit more strength into this time of year because I'm not too worried about being sore. And then it also works with the with weather potentially being in, inclement as well. So essentially how I'll structure, I really like having a training plan like with CXC Academy. So you have some structure, but you need to find a way to make that training plan fit with your life. When I was just training full-time, everything like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to execute this plan. And now I've got a, a few more variables. I've got a four-year-old daughter, Heidi. I've got uh, my wife, Caitlin. And then I'm in the office uh, 40 to 45 hours a week as well. So first off, I try to find, okay, what, what do I think is going to be the most important of the sessions that uh, Caitlin writes my training plan uh, what's, what sessions are going to be the most important. So I usually start with like my intensity and this time of year, it's, a, it's lighter intensity. I like to think of it as, I still like to do intervals. So I have a focus period of time that like, okay, I'm just trying to do, you know, I'm trying to run really well. I'm trying to run really smoothly, but I might try, I do it at the lower end of things. I like to do a lot of lactate testing. So I actually have a portable lactate meter where I might bring that out so that I can test them. If you're more scientific, somewhere in that two to four millimole range. Another great way to do it is thinking of like, okay, I'm just going to close my mouth and I'm going to breathe out of my nose. And so one, that works out great when I'm talking with my friend, Matt, because he likes to talk. Um, so I give him plenty of time to talk. And then also uh, it just gives me another thing to think about. And it sort of forces me like, you can only go so hard just breathing through your nose. Like I got a big nose, but it, it there comes a point that... Um, you just can't go any faster. So I like to have those types of challenges um, in this time of year. Are you trying to get your workouts done uh, like before the work or after the work? How does it usually work best for you? Yeah, so <laughs> it sort of depends as we get later in the week. I start off the week, like, like this morning, I got up at 6.30 and then I ran my daughter into school. Uh, she's learning how to ride a bike so I can just sort of lightly push on the back of her helmet and, you know, get in five or six miles that way. The, uh, I find that if I can get my workout in, in the morning, not only am I more productive, you get that, you get that rush after the workout, And so I'm more productive in my, in my job. Sometimes I'll end up doing it at the end of the day. The, um, but again, I guess sort of looking at your calendar. So today my daughter has swimming, so I love going to that and so that makes it a little bit tricky if I'm going to have dinner, if I'm going to have dinner with her, which I want to do, and, and Caitlin, then then I don't really have a great option for training in the evening uh, or in the afternoon after work unless I do so after I put her down. So she goes down to bed about eight and fights it till eight thirty or nine. <laughs> but <laughs> we, uh, uh, I try to I try to get 
the bulk of my workout. So that my main workout really in the morning. And one more kind of scheduling question, Brian, also I hear a lot from people. So let's just say if there's a day of the week, uh, you know, you can't do the workout because of what our family obligations. So work and family, uh, would you do two workouts, like one before work, one after work, if you can fit it, if you have a day in the middle of the week, you know, you cannot do a workout because of obligations. Yeah. So I guess I go back to, I'll look at, you know, okay, if I have maybe two in intensity sessions in the week and say, Hey, this is really important. Or maybe I, I missed something last week. And so I didn't get some strength in. I'll, I'll start with, you know, what are the two or three sessions that are most important to me this week? And with those, I'll look, uh, my goals sort of change. It used to be like my ski training, uh, my family, and then my work. And now it's my family, my work, and then my ski training. So I'll look at those different things. Okay, where can I fit in like my three key workouts? And I really try to pencil those in. And those are the ones that I'm a big fan of sharing goals. So I'll let Caitlin, I'll let Heidi know like, hey, these are the things that are really important to me. I want to get this, this, and this in. And I try to just pick two or three because yes, it'd be great to get all six of these things in, but there's a lot of things we're trying to balance in there. And so these are my three key dates. Um, I, I put those on the calendar. I block that time that that's when that's going to happen. And then I also have other things in that calendar. And so if I've got, you know, Heidi swimming or, you know, specific meetings that need to happen at a certain time or different social events or things in there, I'll put those on the calendar. Everything that basically can't be adjusted goes in the calendar first. And then from there, then I put my three things in that I are really important. And then I just try to fit things together. And, and your body doesn't know whether the stress is coming from, you know, the workout that you did, or, you know, maybe you have a, a project that you're wrapping up at work, or, you know, something going on in your social life or your personal life, your body just, you know, takes stress. And so one of the things that has helped me as I've transitioned to, to working full time as part of my training is, is really recognizing that and not just trying to say, hey, I've got to get all of these different things in. So setting reasonable goals saying, hey, these are the things that I'm going to get in. And if I'm going to miss this this week, then it, maybe I'll do that next week, but really trying to see how it fits in because I don't want to focus so much on my training that you know my family starts to suffer. Uh, but so I guess what would change if I have to skip something that might become one of my more important three things that get scheduled for sure the next week.